Thank you uh, very much. And I'd like to recognize the gentleman from New York, Mr. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Administrator, great to see you again. And uh, I'm sure being on Capitol Hill and testifying in these committees is among your favorite things to do. So um, we have a hometown hero that is in orbit right now on the International Space Station. Dr. Jeanette Epps is uh, beloved by her hometown of Syracuse and really has inspired whole generation of young kids in school and uh, she is the talk of the town and the toast of the town. Uh, she's only been up there now for almost two months. Can you give us some insight in the importance of her work and uh, and her mission while she's up in space? Jeanette is an example of the extraordinary ability of our astronauts, their capability. In her case, she had to wait a long time to fly. And yet, she is there on orbit for six months performing great science and maintenance of the International Space Station. Uh, sometimes uh, our astronauts uh, have a great disappointment. Uh, the best example that I can think of is Deke Slayton. He was one of the original seven. Uh, John Glenn, uh, Alan Shepard, etc. Deke was one of them, and they discovered a heart murmur. And Deke was not qualified to fly. And yet Deke then took the role as the chief of the astronaut office through all of those years of, uh, of Gemini and Apollo. For, uh, for Dr. Epps, if I may, um, can you talk about how her mission is helping us get back to the moon specifically? Well, everything that we do on low Earth orbit is in preparation for us to have the understanding and the preparation so that we can go further. And uh, that's what we're starting to do, uh, to go back to the moon, not just for the sake of going to the moon, because we did that a half century ago, but we're going back to the moon to learn in order to go to Mars, just like we are doing things in low Earth orbit on the International Space Station to go further. In addition, we're doing serious science on board the International Space Station. Uh, earlier in the committee hearing, I had testified about things going on on cancer research with the drug Keytruda and with stem cell research. All of that's going on. and. Although I don't know Jeanette's specific science project that she's working on today, she will be working on a lot of that science. Well, we look forward to uh, having her back, but not too soon. She's got a lot of work to do uh, while she's there. I'd like to spend the last little bit of our time talking about um, the, the Draco project and the cooperation between NASA and DARPA with, uh, uh, with nuclear energy and propulsion. Are we still on track for a 2026 test launch? How, how is the DRACO project progressing? Uh, DRACO is a, uh, primarily a DARPA project. Uh, we are working with them on nuclear thermal. It's a joint NASA DARPA project. Uh, yes, it's my understanding that it is uh, on schedule. Uh, it is testing out nuclear thermal uh, propulsion. Uh, that's not the only nuclear propulsion. There's also nuclear electric propulsion, and I hope to get this cranked up and going. Why? Because we need to go faster to Mars. Uh, chemical propulsion will get us there in seven or eight months. Nuclear thermal, nuclear electric can get us there faster. The reason that's important, if we can go fast, we don't have to stay on the surface for on the first time, second time, a year or two until the planets realign, we'd have a chance of getting back so that we go for a short visit, test out what we needed to with all the systems, the equipment, 
the spacecraft, the landers, et cetera, uh, and get back. And uh, I think uh, nuclear thermal and nuclear electric is the propulsion of the future. Great. Well, if we get nuclear propulsion, sign me up. I'd be happy to go. Thanks very much. I yield back, Mr. Chairman.